Welcome to a new video. Today we're going over the skill of factoring quadratic and polynomial expressions, foundational, medium, and advanced difficulty level. Make sure to subscribe before we get into it. Also, I covered all of these skills in a really large video that is my previous upload uh, towards this one. It is about 35 minutes going over every single skill in our advanced maths unit in Khan Academy SAT math practice. I really recommend going and checking that one out. Let's go ahead and get started here. So with this, we just need to factor out the greatest common factor from this expression. We don't have to worry about any um, quadratics factoring whatsoever. We just need to see that each of these terms have a y in it. That means we can factor out a y and then subsequently divide y out of each term. y squared divided by y is simply y. 4xy divided by y is just 4x. And then 3y divided by y is 3. So we left with y parentheses y plus 4x plus 3. That matches answer choice A, which is correct in this case. On to this next question here, we're just multiplying out, as simple as that. We're going to distribute this negative 2 to each term. Negative 2 times negative x squared is going to be positive 2x squared. Negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6, so we're left with 2x squared plus 6. On to this next question, here we are just going to... Uh, once again, factor out the greatest common factor. We can see here that we have an x squared and an x here. Whenever we have the same variables uh, in each term, we can only factor out the lowest degree variable. So lowest degree variable is x to the power 1, so that's what we're going to factor out here. We write the x outside of the parentheses. We divide 3x squared by x, so that's just 3x. Then we divide 4xy squared by x. We are left with plus 4y squared. So then this is our correct answer here, which matches answer choice B. On to number 4. Here we're simply just distributing out a negative sign, which stands for negative 1. So negative 1 times negative 2x squared is positive 2x squared. Negative 1 times negative 4x is positive 4x. Negative 1 times positive 7 is negative 7. So this matches answer choice C. That is all for our foundational difficulty level. Let's move to the medium. On to this, we are starting off with a difference of squares questions. Uh, whenever we have a difference of squares, we first need to see if that is the case. Uh, we first need to factor out the greatest common factor of 2 from each term. When we do that, we are left with uh, 2 parentheses x squared minus 25. And now we have a difference of squares. Uh, the a co well, the a x squared is can be square rooted, and so can 25. In this difference of squares case, we can square root both of the factors, and then our answer is going to be a plus 1 with the factor, and then a minus with the other. So that looks like this. 2 parentheses x minus 5 parentheses x plus 5. If I were you guys, I'd go back to the Algebra 1 uh, reference sheet, uh, formula reference sheet, and you will see diff both difference of squares, which was this case, and also perfect square trinomials. These special cases are going to be very important for those more harder SAT questions. On to our next question here. We are given a quadratic function in which we need to factor here. Uh, we just need to remember that the factors are going to multiply to negative 14 and add to negative 5. The factors that do that here would be uh, negative 7 and positive 2. Negative 7 times 2 is negative 14. Negative 7 plus 2 is negative 5. So that means the factors are plainly x minus 7, parentheses, x plus 2. And this matches best with answer choice B. On to number 3 right here, we're just going to take out the greatest common factor. So we can't factor out a 5 from each of these terms. However, I believe that we can uh, divide out a 7 from each of these terms. Uh, so first, let's take out that number, and then we can realize, oh, we have two similar variables. So that means we can factor out both a t and an m squared. Remember, if we have both of the same variables, we can only take out the lowest degree. So that's m squared for the m variable in this case. So we're going to factor out the GCF of 7 t m squared, and then divide both of the terms by 7 t m squared. That gets 13 for our first term, and then minus 5 m squared. This matches best answer choice D, so that is the correct answer for this one. On to our last question here. This time, um, we might notice that we have an A coefficient here, which we first need to factor out using our GCF method. 
So 3 is the greatest common factor. All three of our terms can be divided by 3 and it results in a whole number. So we're going to divide out 3. We get x squared plus 7x plus 6. And now we can use our multiplying uh, to 6, adding to 7 strategy to get this one. Our factors are going to be 6 and 1. 6 times 1 is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. So now our answer is just going to look like 3 parentheses x plus 6 and parentheses start parentheses x plus 1, which matches best answer choice A. Let's move to our advanced difficulty level now. On to this one, we first need to combine like terms. We notice we have these m squared terms, these m terms, and these constant terms. Let's combine them. 4m squared minus m squared is 3m squared. 7m plus 3m is plus 10m. And then 5 minus 13 is negative 8. Now, to factor this, we can't take out a GCF. We need to use the AC method of quadratic factoring. That means we just multiply the 3 with our negative 8. We get negative 24. And then we find the factors of negative 24 that add to positive 10. In this case, those are um, 12 and negative 2. 12 times negative 2 is negative 24. 12 minus 2 is 10. So we're going to split the 10m factor into a minus 2 plus 12, well, minus 2m plus 12m. That looks exactly like this. 3m squared minus 2m plus 12m minus 8. Now we are going to separate this into two parentheses and factor out the GCF out of each of them. So uh, we can factor out an m out of the first parentheses. We are left with uh, 3m minus 2. And then we can factor out a 4 out of the second parentheses. We are left with 3m minus 2. You might notice that we have the same factors here. We can cross out this first one, unite the m and the 4, and we are left with 3m minus 2, m plus 4 as our two factors. That matches answer choice C. On to this next question. If m squared plus p squared equals x and 4mp equals y, which of the following is equivalent to 4x plus 2y? So we're just going to directly substitute out the x with its expression and the y with its expression. Let's go ahead and do that first. So we have 4 parentheses m squared plus p squared. And then we have plus 2 parentheses 4mp. So 2 times 4mp is just 8mp, and then we can distribute the 4 to each of these terms. So then we have 4m squared plus 4p squared. I believe in this case we are supposed to recognize that this is a perfect square trinomial. So let me go ahead and reorder it in um, this ma manner, which we have the plus 8mp plus 4p squared. In this perfect square trinomial format, we have perfect squares for these two terms, and then we have uh, two times the product of each of the individual terms to make up the middle term. So we're going to take this sign right here. We are going to square root the first and the last terms. Uh, square root of 4m squared is 2m. Square root of 4p squared is plus uh, is p squared is 2p, which now we can bring down the plus and then square this. This will result in our answer here. So having, having memorized these difference of squares and perfect square trinomial scenarios are going to be very important. Into, on to our next question. To find the value of a, we first need to identify the value of v. We can't solve for two variables at a time, two unknown constants at a time. You might notice that the c term is formed from these two terms foiling out with each other, the last. In, as part of the FOIL acronym. So 5 times v has to be equal to 25. So we know that v must equal 5 then. Uh, so we are not sure of what's going to result in this, but let's just replace this v with a 5 and then multiply out and then see how close we are into identifying what a must be. So ax times x is ax squared, and then ax times 5 is plus 5ax, and then 5 times x is plus 5x, and then 5 times 5 is plus 25. So you might notice that this middle term has to be equal to 25x. So we can have 5ax plus 5x equals 25x. We can subtract 5x from each side. Now we have 5ax equals 20x. And you might notice that uh, if we divide both sides by x, we're left with 5a equals 20 and a equals positive 4. So that means answer choice C is the correct answer here.
On to this last question here. You might notice this is a perfect square trinomial when we have a perfect square here. And a perfect square here, we are just going to take the sign from this term. Uh, so we're going to square root the first term, square root the last term. Square root of 4x squared is just 2x. Square root of 49 is just 7. And then because that is a plus 28x, the sign in between them is plus. And we square this factor to get our answer. So that means answer choice A is correct for this question. That is all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this factoring quadratics and polynomial expressions skill. If you have any more recommended skills, if you want me to go over a full unit review of that last SAT math prep unit of geometry and trigonometry, I believe, just let me know in the comments and I'll make sure to visit it. I hope you all have a great day and goodbye.